Hey there everyone, welcome to Colette. Uh, this is a game that's a little over a year old, and one that I've actually wanted to play since before it was actually released. I know there's been a few less players that have actually played this, uh, and it's actually been about a year since I've seen the playthroughs for them. But what brought me back to this is that I listened to uh, a podcast that really does a lot in terms of working with folklore and various legends and whatnot. And um, uh, one of their more recent podcasts was the fact was about uh, the events that this game is is somewhat based on uh, about the the Dyatlov party that disappeared and died mysteriously on The pass that they were trying to reach was named um, Dialov Pass. And what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description below um, to this podcast so that you folks can hear it. Um, the gentleman that does it does a fantastic job with it and all of his podcasts. And if you're a fan of uh, lots of folklore and urban legend type things, this is a pretty good source. Um, so, anyway, Colot. Um, again, basically the game takes place after the events that occurred, and we'll get right into it. Yes, I want to start a new game. I, much like many other Let's Players, actually um, preloaded the game to make sure that it would actually work. So, now I record with Fraps. Um, Colat uses Direct3D11. So, I know there is an issue because it popped up on my screen that uh, Fraps will occasionally crash D3D11. So, I'm going to try this with Fraps. If it doesn't work or crashes out a lot, I'm going to have to see what I can do in terms of other recording software. Um, I have FF Split available. Uh, I've not been able to get it. 56 years ago, Russia, the northern Ural Mountains. A group of nine students of the Ural Polytechnic Institute embarked upon a difficult winter expedition to reach the Otorten Mountain. Their journey seemed to progress according to plan, However, on the seventh day of their trip, the weather conditions worsened. They lost their orientation and were forced to set up a camp on the slope of the mountain called Kolat Siakl. It was their last stop. Three weeks later in Yekaterinburg, when their families received no word of their success, the first rescue expeditions were sent. On February 25th, 1959, an abandoned encampment was found. The tent was torn down and covered with snow, with all the group's belongings left inside. Further examination revealed it was cut from inside out. The surrounding footprints indicated the crew had fled the tent. They were barefooted. This suggests a frantic escape, characteristic of people scared out of their wits. Two sets of prints led to a forested area down the slope. The rescue team found an improvised fireplace, and two bodies. They were lying in but their underwear, with cuts and scratches to their limbs, suggesting they had tried to climb the tree in panic. What could terrify them so much? The next three bodies were found scattered a few hundred meters from the first discovery. One of them had suffered a fractured skull, this despite no evidence of a struggle. 
it took the spring thaw two months later to enable the rescue team to find the rest of the victims. The last four skiers were found buried in a thick layer of ice and snow. Their autopsies led to even more bizarre findings. All of the bodies had severe internal injuries caused by an undetermined force similar to that of a serious car accident. No external damage nor bruises were visible, besides a tongue ripped from one victim's mouth and a strange orange skin color. Much speculation arose from these puzzling events. Such theories included attack from the local tribesmen from an avalanche or animals. Each theory, however, only served to create more questions. The truth behind this tragic course of events remains unexplained to this day. What really happened? Maybe the answer still waits to be discovered, deep under the snow. And that, folks, is a fairly accurate uh, recount of what happened. Um, at least as far as I've been able to find in what I've recently heard. Um, like I said, I'll leave it to you folks to make that judgment yourself. Because um, like I, I am going to leave a link to the podcast. I really want to share that with everyone because that is what brought me back to this game uh, a year after I wanted to play it. music is really chilling. They did a great job with um, not only how the game looks, but how it sounds. At least so far. Great narration by the famous Sean Bean. This game is uh, still available on the Steam store. It might be available elsewhere, but I'm not sure. I do know it is available on Steam. I just recently picked it up. Well worth the money I spent on it. Here exploring by myself in an area where set were, I believe the actual number is 10. Yeah, I don't remember exactly. Uh, hikers were killed. Um, I'm not sure. Like I said, I personally would not actually do this, uh, nor would I ever suggest to anyone that they go off into the woods by their lonesome. It's actually very dangerous to do so. You should always at least have one person with you so that in the event that something... Hello? Are you coming to me? Who, who, who just asked me that? Why is it so freaking creepy? Oh, that's just creepy. Insufferable burning light, the pain ripping apart my body. I felt it tearing out of my soul. After a while, I was nobody, nothing. The light went out and I vanished into overwhelming darkness. 
I welcomed the end with delight. So, something that mightily impresses me is that uh, very fine attention to detail. Sidestep gives you sideways prints. If you walk backwards, you obviously get your prints facing in the right direction. That's that's really impressive. Um, I don't think most game developers would actually do that. Anyway, as I was starting to say, um, there was also a horror movie that is sort of also based on the lore surrounding um, this incident. Uh, we don't quite remember what it's called. Um, something you can used to be able to find on Netflix. And it's essentially a team of I think it was students that are going up into the mountains to retrace the exact path that uh, Dyatlov and his party took. And what the hell is going on? What? I can't see. which way I'm actually supposed to go if there is, is actually a directed way I'm supposed to go or not okay so obviously I'm meant to go in a specific direction. And I am noticing how nasty and dirty my monitor is. By the way, this is this right here. What's happening in game is the exact reason you wouldn't go trekking out into the wilderness by yourself without a buddy or a real plan of uh, uh, a real plan of, of what you would need, where you're going, what you're doing. Because this is how you die in the wilderness. Apparently I'm heading the wrong direction. Or something's trying to kill me. Set. I know what I'm supposed to be looking for, I just don't know. Which bloody way I'm supposed to go at this point.
I don't know if there's a specific way I'm supposed to go or anything. It might just be blind luck that I'm supposed to stumble upon what it is I'm supposed to stumble upon. I honestly... Here we go. This is what I was looking for. I believe this is their tent. That took longer than I wanted it to. It's a loading, it's a loading. Apparently I'm singing a loading song and I don't know why. Uh. Come on, load faster. Act two. Have you ever tried to hold on to your humanity? When others convince you of being no more than a subject, an object, which they can bend to their will. When they told you that you were a monster that deserved punishment. When you could really not remember your sins. When they took away your loved ones leaving you to rot in the dark. The problem is, that in their darkness, you have never been alone. I don't want to follow the flaming footprints, thanks. So, anyway, we're going to leave this episode here. Um, I think it was a pretty good introduction. Um, next episode, we'll obviously start the exploring and whatnot. Uh, check the links below to see the link to the podcast I want you to go listen to. Uh, because it has a little bit more information on the whole Diablo party and the story behind Colachiaco and Mount Atorton. And... If you like what you've seen so far, leave a like and subscribe, and uh, certainly come back for more. Until then, take care.